I decided to spend a full week in Roblox Tower Defense Simulator, starting from a completely fresh account with nothing unlocked, to try to obtain the rarest towers, kill the strongest zombies, and see how much progress I can make. Now for context, on my regular account, I have every tower, hundreds of skins, some emotes, a name tag, verified flare, but now all that progress would be erased as I became... Propakami, a brand new account I made with an untraceable pseudonym. I gave my avatar a bit of style, I like this oversized sweater, and hopped in game for day one. Now in Tower Defense Simulator, or TDS, your main goal here is to unlock these towers who fight for you. The more expensive they get, the stronger they become in return. Until eventually you have little guys with particle accelerator guns melting down zombies. But here, I just had the scout and sniper towers, which everyone gets for free. So in order to buy some bear towers, I need to try to get a win. So I started out asking around to see if anyone would be willing to help out a poor little level 0 player like me. This group said, no. But then this guy Blake was like, sure, I'll help. And he was someone experienced, being level 20 and carrying some upgraded towers that I knew would help us a lot. So we got in an elevator to join this map here, Meltdown. Handy Dan also joined, although I didn't get to check out his stats before we load into the game. So I hoped he was like level 100 or something. Upon joining, I immediately changed my settings a bit and turned off the dialogue. Blake told me to play scouts for early defense, so I complied. And you can see how average they were. Still, the zombies that spawned in on these early waves were all pretty weak, so it was okay for them. Blake was using farms to generate income, although he had to leave his computer to go eat. So he friended me and left Handy Dan and I to defend until he finished munching. This is where I learned that Handy Dan had only one more tower than I did. Uh oh. Now, in this challenge, the only advantage I had was my own game knowledge. So in this first game, I focused on snipers rather than scouts. They had a slower fire rate but higher damage, and importantly, great range to cover the whole path. I asked Dan for his thoughts on the run, and he replied, Goog. So yeah, things were not going too badly at all. Blake popped back in on wave 17, the mid game, to place one of his specialty towers, Warden, but then had to go again. It instantly did as much total damage as the scout I had placed way earlier, because this thing is strong. It lets take down the necromancer and the molten zombies, neither of whom had that much health. Yet, as the game continued, with Blake still AFK, things were getting a tad precarious, and when he finally returned at wave 31, yeah. Blake's reaction here was definitely justified, as we barely squeaked that one out. From here, he began placing more Wardens, along with his last tower in Electroshocker, which stuns zombies using electricity. These both massively improved their defense, and soon we were practically spawn killing zombies. After some inspirational words from me and Dan, we managed to reach the final wave. Now, in TDS, each mode goes to 40 waves, where a boss then spawns. In this game mode, it was the Molten Boss. And I'm gonna be frank here, this did not go very well. He made it past most of the towers, only having lost 15 out of the 70,000 health he had. I began to sell and replace my towers, which was really all I could do, and Blake did the same. But despite all our effort, all that hope, we just couldn't do enough. In over a 4.5 minute long final wave, we managed to get the boss down to his final piece of health, but couldn't finish the job. Still, not bad for the first day, considering my loadout would only be improving from here. We all said GG and went our separate ways, and I earned 75 experience points and 400 coins, bringing my level straight up to 1, and providing me with a bit of spending money for better towers. So for day 2, I started off by buying my first tower. With the money I had, I could only choose between Paintballer, Demo Man, and Soldier, so I chose the Explosive Space Tower. As for a beginner unit, it's got some solid DPS and the splash damage effect is pretty good. After perusing the lobby for a little bit, I managed to kind of sneak into this match. And it was funny because it was me and all Alceras, who both had pretty much nothing, and these two people, both named Jock, who had really strong towers. The demo man was a definite step up for me and let me help out the team a little more, but it was obvious the two Jacques were doing all the heavy lifting. The highlight of this match was definitely when Jock number one started playing the SpongeBob fail sound through the DJ custom music button. Since we were on easy mode, the amount of waves is 10 less, and we reached the final boss quickly, the Grave Digger, with only 40,000 health. Al Sirius was like, it's so over. It's so over. We're so back. Yeah, we took down the boss pretty easily, my teammates' towers were strong, and I earned 
half of the coins I got from losing the Molten game. Normal mode is not really worth playing. The main benefit here was the EXP bonus, as beating a game mode for the first time always awards you bonus EXP prize, which here brought me all the way up to level 4. Still a fair way off the level unlock base towers, but progress is progress. I ran another attempt at Molten mode by just inviting totally random people from the lobby to team and seeing who would join. This run was marred with complications. First, one of our four teammates left, and then I realized I couldn't place towers or do anything. I did have a million dollars. Because with a glitch that would there become reoccurring, the game failed to load in my team. I had to leave the game, open TDS again, use the rejoin feature, go through another loading screen, and finally get back. Meaning we were already a third of the way through the match before I could place anything. Uh, our team chemistry wasn't great. As I realized, Ronald was also a beginner. Player had a mini in their tower, but he was a bit too committed to farming. Ronald and I were literally fighting for our lives out there, like we were on our last leg here, and bro is maxing every farm. Which I do respect actually, I like that. And when he finally got all the money he needed, he started to fully upgrade many gunners and things got a bit better. Letting us reach the final wave for my second attempt at the molten boss, there were a lot of little problems here. Player not selling all his farms and not moving his towers, Ronald really only being able to play soldiers, and me just spamming pretty weak demo men. We got very close, taking the molten boss to only 11,000 health, but we still ended up failing. And that was it for day 2. Okay, doing a bit of live commentary for day 3 here. So far, uh, things haven't gone great. Have not gotten that first Molten one yet, and I really need to step it up. I need to start playing a lot more. Now, I did get a lot of coins yesterday, but I still think I just want to save to try to get, like, a better tower, a mid-range tower, rather than just, uh, whatever it's there. Like I said there, I knew I need to step up this day. I started off strong by just randomly jumping into this match at the last possible second. Which was weird because the map didn't load in for a while, so we were just playing in the void. My teammate Richest Noob had some pretty solid towers and he farmed for a while, as me and ABD used their beginner towers to defend, and I was pretty confident. Richest Noob spammed medics and minigunners, and after my asking, he got commander tower down, one of the best units in the game since it gives a passive boost to all nearby towers. Reaching the molten boss for the third time, finally, things went well. With a ton of minigunners and other assorted towers, our damage was solid throughout and we took him down, earning me 500 coins, more EXP, and another badge reward. After everything, I was now level 9, one shy of unlocking a 5th tower slot. So next, I played a few games with this guy, Retro, who was a bit of an anomaly because he was a level 100 plus player with some rare towers. Now there are definitely some somewhat elitist high level TDS players who are kind of unlikable, but there's also people like Retro, who are down to just chill and play the multi match with noobs like me. We played our first game on Construction Crazy, admittedly a very poor map choice by me, since there's barely any space, but he agreed to try to carry me. His strong towers, in particular his two stunning units, carried, and when we reached wave 40, Retro was mostly just chilling, just chatting with me, while I was tryharding to the extreme, moving all these towers like I was actually doing something. We got the boss low, but did lose, and we actually ended up in the same lobby when we joining. So we ran back again, this time with a full team. Honestly, it was actually kind of awkward just because neither of the two new players said a single thing the whole game. Or actually he said one thing, one time. But in return we had much more firepower. Like I said here, we started spawn killing. And this time, when we reached wave 40, we were cooking something exquisite. Easily taking down the boss, earning more rewards. And after farming two quick losses, I earned enough coins for a new tower. Now, I was torn between military base and rocketeer. Military base would be better for the early game, rocketeer would be better overall. And military base is more fun. It was an impossible decision. Or it would have been. If we go back to that construction crazy game, while we were talking, unprompted, Retro advised me to purchase some military base when I could. Cementing the spawning tower as a clear choice for my next unit. Shout out Retro, the guilt. Moving on to day 4, I tried sneaking my way into this group of high level players, and they saw through my deception pretty quickly, so I randomly joined this guy, Percy ID's game, and he was like, 2 out of 2, and I was like, oh okay, I guess we're gonna duel this, I don't know why. I advocated we try Fallen, the hardest base mode, and things didn't go very well. I did get to use my new tower at least, spawning in trucks that could destroy zombies, but Percy had no farm to make money, or any super strong tower other than minigunner. I mean, I would have liked this setup if we had a full team, but with only the two of us, we were unsuccessful and lost fairly quickly. Next, I was in the lobby, these guys were saying some very bad stuff, and I hopped into the squad for a molten game. Things started off by Pia asking Willow if they were a femboy. I include this because this was actually a decent interaction, where Willow was like, 
So what? And Pio is like, okay, yeah, so I shouldn't have gone there, you're good. A lot of TTS fans could learn from that. My teammates carried pretty hard here as we got mini gunners, sledgers, toxic gunners, commanders, etc, etc, a bunch of good towers. While I just focused on my own grind, my military bases. And when the molten moss spawned, we chewed through them in the fastest run yet. 500 more coins, please, waiter. <laughs> uh. Day 5, I locked in heavy. First of all, I joined the Paradoxum Games group as there's an in-game incentive where you start each round with an extra $100. And I somehow managed to play 3 games, almost all in a row, all on toy board. I really wanted to get into the tower today to flesh out my loadout, and I developed a strategy which was basically to just hop in random, higher level people's games, only place military bases, and maybe one or two demo men depending, and hope they're good enough to carry me the whole game. Which didn't work out in this first match here, as we did not really have like, any good towers split between the three of us, and then just the two of us, as reverse left me and Skelly to lose on our own. After joining back to the lobby, I got randomly invited by this person, Knight, and he ended up sending the team to a whole new mode, Pizza Party. Now this was one of three modified modes which have much better rewards but are also a lot trickier gameplay wise. There's normally this level 25 check on the other two, but for whatever reason, Pizza Party allows all levels. To play, at least. To do well? Uh, no. My military base strategy wasn't working very well, as the team and I here just kind of floundered around. We did not have the sauce. And we ended up losing. Although the rewards were actually quite nice for such a quick loss. I then played my other tour board games. In the first one, the team was fully kitted out with turrets and minigunners. So I just did my thing in the background and we got a dub. The next game was pretty similar, albeit even a bit stronger, as Remains had the level 100 tower pursuit and Z-Dog had two golden towers, which are a whole other thing, some rare skins. He also had the minigunner with the 2020 bunny skin. Which, side note, why does the bunny suit become green on the final level? It looks so strange, it's so weird. This guy, Sir Kevin, was a bit of a goofball. Shout out Dark Wizard Money Gang, shout out the in-game unit cap, shout out the subscribe button. You should definitely subscribe if you are not. But yeah, our team was overpowered honestly, another dub. When I joined back to the lobby, I found someone cosplaying as the Molten Boss here. So I said, 70,000 health. And he responded with the classic Molten Boss line, ABC to do air support only. Anyways, I would reached level 17, and I had now acquired exactly 2,724 coins. Which meant I had a few options for towers I could buy, but there was one I decided to target that cost 3,000 coins. So I hopped in one more game, a trio on crossroads. We didn't have any standout towers or anything, and just kinda autopiloted through this. And that win finally gave me enough coins for my next tower, Electroshocker. The same unit Blake was using way back in that first game. It's a hybrid support DPS tower, chaining electricity to stun and slow zombies. And I thought it would random my loadout nicely. After copying it, I still had 224 coins left, so I made a bit of a play here, purchasing the cheapest in-game tower, Paintballer. Now I wasn't planning on actually using it in-game cause it kinda sucks, but I bought it just to move Scout out of my loadout, as I felt like psychologically, it made me look like a bit less of a beginner. I was playing some crazy mind games. And I decided to take this tower for a test run in the last match of day 5 on Harbor. My teammates here were Mesley and Quart, the former of who defended early, placing militants while I got military base. And neither of them had crazy overpowered loadouts, but both were solid. Mesley was also funny because uh, throughout this video, I reset my avatar a lot to get more interesting camera angles, since I don't have free cam permissions on this account. And every time I did it on this map, he would just slowly turn his avatar towards me, which I thought was unreasonably enjoyable to witness, just like this gameplay. As we reached the molten boss and I freestyled on him, not a care in the world. We finished off the demon and after GG's and EZ's all around, I ended the day just shy of level 20 and with a bit higher of a coin count. For day 6, I want to upgrade my loadout yet again. And I sat in the lobby to try to get a game. I don't have the best towers, but I have a good heart. In retrospect, I am not proud of that. And then this guy was like, we should play together, because he only had the demo man and paintballer. Still, I decided to run a duo game with him, on the absolutely beautiful Stained Temple map. This gameplay was anything but beautiful though. Energy Genesis was definitely beginner, his placements were not super optimal. I pointed out his unintentional pun about the molten boss, and he seemed incredibly unamused. Honestly, this player gave me very strange vibes this whole game, and his towers weren't able to support my team too much. We made a fight of it, but lost on the final wave. Going back to the lobby, I had my joker moment here. I'm done messing around. Join my team if you want to speedrun 10 minute win on every mode. 
no one did. So I just hopped in game with these guys, and made a colossal blunder, as I forgot to start recording until wave 24. Which is a problem because this player, ZZ1, was wearing a FaZe Clan shirt in the lobby, and I said, nice FaZe shirt, and he said, thanks. Which led to me joining their game, it's like the whole origin story here. But then he changed his avatar during the loading screen to this random shirt here, which ruins the entire plotline. Anyways, the game itself was fine. Our fourth teammate left pretty early on, but both ZZ1 and Pla had solid mid-range towers. The final wave did drag on a bit, but we got the job finished. Joining back, I got a basic crate as a daily login reward. Technically it should have been yesterday, but this relies on playtime rather than time zones, so yeah. Meaning I could get one single skin, with the catch that all options were simple recolors, save this one demo man skin, which I hoped for. And I ended up getting... Red Paintballer. Gambling is not good. Next, this guy invited me to join his party, and I once again played a match on Toy Board. The scuffedness of these final days was incomparable, as the game glitched out and didn't load in my towers, the same as what happened on day 2, and I again had to go through two more loading screens to be able to play. And honestly, it wasn't really worth the 3 minutes and 15 seconds that took, as we'd picked Fallen Mode and weren't up to the challenge. JJ was a pretty ordinary player, while his friend Sierra was pretty much a beginner, and Shell Drake was the most experienced, having the rare event tower Gladiator, but not a whole lot of DPS. My favorite moment here was on Wave 26, where Shell Drake said, Got the commander chain up. The struggle is no more and then we lost almost immediately after. My military base and electro combo didn't work too well here, and when the tank mini boss spawned in wave 30, we got crushed. Next, we six, mind blocks, and I tried to get a trio fallen win on the black spot exchange map. The problem here is twofold. One, this map is substantially harder because two times he meant a zombie spawn, and two, perhaps more troublingly, the zombies wore pirate hats. I mean this run didn't even really get going properly, we just lost very quickly. So joining back to the lobby, I tried a different tact. I asked, who wants to win? And these guys did. Among our team of four, I was definitely the weakest link, and I was also paired with the most stacked player I had encountered yet, as UAC had these two towers, Accelerator and Engineer, kind of the faces of high level TDS. They're very strong and both are relatively difficult to obtain, so I had high hopes. Same strategy as always for me, military base and electroshocker, while UAC farmed a bit and placed his first excel by wave 12, which chewed through the early game waves. Benjamin was cosplaying as the warden tower, and fittingly, spammed a massive chain limb along the path. The tank boss that killed us before was going to do it again, unless Uwek could fully upgrade his accelerator by wave 30, which he did manage to do by a margin of $94. That close call secured the late game for us as it handled the tank easily, and Uwek began to place more accelerators. I was still doing my thing, upgrading electroshockers, and I'd like to think that little bit of support was what allowed us to reach the final boss. The Fallen King is much tougher than the Molten Boss, having 150,000 health, and this is where the tower selection really hurt us, as Warden's tiny range greatly reduced their impact. We were relying too heavily on accelerators. Uh, Benjamin panicked and left the game, and then immediately joined back, but despite me and Uek moving our units with the boss, we just didn't have enough power, as our fourth player had left the game much earlier. We got the Fallen King down to 20,000 health, but that was still roughly a thousand times more than our base health, so we ended up failing. For one last attempt, I decided to place my faith in the random, and use the automatic matchmaking statue, and in this case, I got very lucky. Farms all around, Pursuit, Minigunner, even Accelerator, which we would need to be the menacing Fallen King. Speaking of menacing, the skybox for this map, normally bright and sunny, you know, just never loaded in. I was playing in the void here, not feeling great, foreshadowing more gameplay issues to come. A lot of my hopes rested on Papa1234 Game, the Accelerator player, who I learned was actually the brother of Riot, so we had the sibling synergy buff between them. 1234 focused on farming and getting accelerators, while Riot got minigunners in pursuit, and Master Chef and I were also there, helping the team. Once again, we reached the Fallen King, and this time things played out much differently, as we took the big man down, and I earned 700 coins along with the Fallen Badge. After claiming the EXP reward, I ended off day 6 at level 24 and more importantly, bought another tower, the Ace Pilot, which I slotted into my loadout for day 7. To be very transparent, the final day did not go well at all. The Ace Pilot itself was a great addition to my loadout, as it's actually got some really really good DPS, with the drawback being its limited range. But my mental game was shot, due in part to worsening internet and some computer issues. Still, I pressed on and got into this fallen game on Wrecked Battlefield, where this player, Bombo, kinda had to be our carry, as he had the Accelerator Tower and two other level exclusives. He focused on farming though, 
like really focused on farming. On wave 26, after we almost lost to these glitch zombies, he still continued to fully max out all his farms. And when he finally got all his money, he placed the accelerators here. And I was very sad. Now realistically, is this a big deal at all? No, it's my teammate still placing a very good tower just at the back rather than the front of the path. Yeah, at this point for me, it, it was pretty much the end of the world. I was just genuinely tilted. So I tried to recenter and just focus on what I could do, namely upgrading my ace pilots further. Yeah, but distracted by that, we actually lost to the tank zombie. Not my finest hour. But that bit of EXP finally pushed me over level 25, meaning this barrier was removed and I can now legitimately play special game modes. To accompany these, I purchased the Medic Tower. This unit is like the meme where there's a graph curve of Medic is a good tower, Medic sucks. Medic is a good tower. I tried to play the Badlands mode, but with three paths, it's not really possible to triumph without top tier towers. And I didn't think there was any way I could realistically win without asking three pros to carry me, and I didn't want to do that. So instead I switched to Pizza Party, the definite easiest special mode. But even these attempts went poorly. For one, I forgot to record the first 30 waves of this game. Another side effect of my drained mental. And despite whatever I was saying here, we were not doing well at all. Similar to Badlands, we didn't have that extra oomph you need to win special modes. On that first wave I started recording, we came this close to losing. And then the next wave a commander puppet zombie spawned. This guy sucks and he killed us. My further attempts only decreased in quality. I couldn't really bring myself to play anymore, and after my final attempt at Pete's party ended up leaving me with no teammates, I logged off the account, feeling discouraged, ending the week long challenge. But I didn't want to end this video on such a sour note. So the next day, feeling refreshed, I hopped on the Propakami account one more time. My final objective, the Commander Tower. The mascot of TDS, the most iconic unit, the narrator. I was just three molten wins worth of coins away, and I knew I couldn't let him down. So I locked in. My internet was terrible. Each game I loaded into, my towers and loadout did not generate. So every single match, I had to leave and rejoin early. I could also only capture snippets of footage for each game, because my frame rate turned into this when I started recording. This first game could not have been closer, as it was me and poo jelly with soldiers and ace pilots, moving units along the path and fighting to the bitter end, one molten win. Next, I got into this Autumn Falling game. Diego was our hard carry, as he had the warden in other towers. I spammed Ace Pilot, two Molten Winds. Finally, I got into this game on Retro Zone. The Medic Tower I had purchased and not really used prior came in clutch during this game, as I used its healing abilities to counter the Molten Boss's stuns, and with a full team to support, three Molten Winds, giving me barely enough coins to purchase the commander and end this challenge with the big man himself. So after everything, Propakami ended at level 27 with nine towers, five badges, nine friends and a win ratio of 0.72 across 31 games. Overall I mostly enjoyed this week up until the end. My favorite part of this was just the various people I played with. The small little funny interactions really made each day for me. I struggled a lot while making this video but I'm glad to be finished with this one. And to move on to greener pastures and better video ideas and clear more heavily. If this video gets 10k likes I'll do it again for a month. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Bye.